Yeah, Let's I, start in the the very beginning. You grew up where? Was it? Dorchester, Quincy, Southeast. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Stomping grounds. And what what year is this? Like when you're you're kind of starting to run around. Like when you're like, because I know you got in it a little bit at like 15. Is that right? Um, kind of the first. I, I kind of was like, uh, if you've ever seen a Bronx Tale. Yes. Yep. Yep. Taken around. To, you were uh, what's his name? Yeah. I, I, know, know, I, yeah. I watched that movie I with my father. That, so. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people didn't know was um, Whitey. I mean, yep. I will call him Whitey for the purpose of content. Because yeah, actually, yep. I had to go back and my editorial chief was like, can you stop referring to him in the book as Jim? And I'm like, yes. uh, yeah, Jimmy. They want you to say Whitey. 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 Yep. Or whatever. So I'm just like, okay. He had um, his own house in Quincy. Okay. From Esquanum. Yep. So a lot of people didn't know he had two crews going. Really? Yeah. Wow, I never knew that. He had a oh, South man. Shore crew in um, Dorchester. And then he had a South Boston guys. Gotcha. Okay. He tried to wow. keep them separated because he didn't want to split all the wow. money. Wow. So how yep. did you, in the beginning, when you're roaming around Southie, before you got like into the life per se, how, how was life in Southie around then? And, and then how did you meet up with Whitey and get involved in all that? Um, I was raised, my mother was very promiscuous. Okay. And, you know, we cover all that. I think yep. the first chapter of the autobiography. Um, she had an inter- interesting, um, I used to, like a reverse harem. Like he was talking with uh, my publisher about it and he was like, Sean, we gotta go back and check this because you know, when you say national heroes and, right. and I sent him a photo of my mother with Norman Rockwell and <laughs> at NASA with a NASA yep. astronaut yep. and then with the president at the time. And Jesus. He was like, Holy fuck, dude. I said, Told you, my mother was very, she was a gun mall. Right, right, yeah. right. So it was pretty crazy, man. Damn, that's but, um, crazy. I just, um, I would kind of just was born into it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Was it like, uh, I'm always fascinated, like, is it the environment you're born into, or do you, you know, is it like, is, I'm assuming rougher neighborhood, and that was just kind of the, somewhat of the path? Um, or were you always kind of cut out for something I, like I, this? I just think that... I gotta, I gotta be honest, like I always am. I saw, you know, my father, God rest his soul, he was my adopted dad. He raised me, he was a yep. Jewish guy. He was on the fringes of everybody. He never really crossed that line. Yeah, he was right. the guy that would open the bars for everybody. The legal guy had the construction companies. He was a great man. And um, he uh, always had me around. When, when they figured out I was no good in school after fourth grade, <laughs> I used to go out to. Um, Toby's, everybody was Uncle, Uncle Toby, Uncle Jim. Yep. We used to go out um, where he was the biggest fence in New England. So yep. we used to have tractor trailers would pull in. He had a double garage with these roll-ups next to his house out in Holbrook. Yep. And it just started out where I would run around and grab drinks and bottles for the guys. Because downstairs of his house, he had a split-level ranch mm-hmm. or a full bar downstairs. That's where everybody came in because his wife, Kitty, didn't like everybody upstairs. Oh, so, okay. Yep. Yeah, so it was like a uh, like a social club. Yeah, right. So right. if they weren't at the Adams Heights social club, then they were at Toby's. And it started just unloading trucks. And yep. then I got, uh, you know, a few years older. Um, 15, I started stealing cars. We was boosting cars when I was 14. Was that the first, uh, not like act of crime, but the first more serious offense at 14, 15 was, was boosting cars? Yeah, was, when you were well, like, no, okay, we were this doing, is. I mean, we were doing like hijacking. Um, there was a it was a train yard out in the South Shore. Yep. So they used to get a tip off from the cops that were supposed to be actually watching the fucking box cars, and we're kids. It's always best to use kids. We didn't have a record. Yeah. Right. Right? And, and this is like, like, isn't this? Uh, this is like pre DNA or anything, right? right? At this time, yeah. so it was like. So you're boosting cars. Are you paying off those cops that gave that tips you off about coming well, to get I this w- car? I wasn't doing it. The oh, okay. guys were. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so, sending the youngins out there. Go yeah. get it. Yeah. And when I was at Toby's house, he would be like, "Hey, run, run these cigarettes out, or, or run this case of booze out, and put yep. it in the back of that cruiser." Oh wow! And did All you right. know at the time those guys were actually tied to? Because they were they a part of Winter Hill. Um, yeah, Jim was. Jim would come there uh, yep. and, and sit with the guys and yep. basically get his cut from them. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And ha- at this time, how much younger are you than Whitey? Because he was. You're Christ, you're uh, what fifteen, and I was he was. 15, he was in his. 
50s? His 50s, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 in his 50s, yeah. And Way repeat, you hear like, you know, through the Hollywood movies like Black Mass, you know. That was did bullshit. He, yeah, yeah, I'm always <laughs> furious, like, you know. <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, I'm always fascinated, like, how accurate are movies like that to how uh, it actually was. I mean, Johnny was. Depp did a good uh, job. Yep. Uh, but I think that uh, they took the um, two reporters, Dick LaHare and yep. um, I don't get the other guy's name. It's kind of just like the movie to me played out the same way as the book read. Okay. Just a, a collection, just a montage of newspaper articles. Right, so right, 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 right. You know, there's so much more that could have been in the movie. Um, it was, I won't say the individual's name because he's a real good guy and he still lives in South Boston. He never was a rat. But there was a time, um, it shows you the difference between certain people and, and Stevie and Kevin yep. Weeks, mm -hmm. two weeks. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and Moderano and these guys. Yeah. That um, hunt, uh, well, again, let's call him Whitey. Yeah. Whitey was at war with this guy, and they were actively hunting each other every single day. Oh, and this wow. guy had to drop on Whitey because he had a girlfriend in Charlestown over Bunker Hill Projects. Um. And the guy was literally laying down and had the scope and the crosshairs right on the back of Whitey's head um, with a thirty oh six. Damn. And just uh, something caught his eye. Yep. It was at night. And he, he was going to shoot through the window. And he saw that Jim Whitey was holding the girlfriend's toddler. Oh, That's the only reason yeah. he didn't get killed. That's that why he didn't pull wow. the... That's why he didn't kill him. When anybody wow. else, you know, and that, I think, in certain circles, would yeah. have shot him. Like, oh, well. Who was crazy. the biggest threat at that time? Was it the, I assume, the Italians, right? That was like the... No. Um, was it more like groups too, or was it certain individuals where you're like, Ooh, this guy's going to be a big problem Yeah, for us. there was, you know, one of my dear friends, um, David, he's uh, doing three life sentences right now. Wow. Hey, he, was, uh, he was the one that, uh, allegedly, he was a freelance guy. Yeah. Uh, they accused him of, Clipping two guys, Mikey Romano Jr. and uh, Richie Devlin in East Boston. Okay, yeah. Um, it was a sanctioned, you know, contract. But he was already out on parole for the body he got caught with last time. They mm. were dumping the body, and they found it in his van. Back then, it was different. You know, you had senators and, and congressmen. You could right. buy paroles. So oh, he got wow. caught with, with the guy they just murdered, and they were going to dump the body. So he got 10 years. He was out in six, bought a parole. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you could purchase parole. It's the, yeah, the networking. Parole. Well, was yeah, it so like Black Mass? They made it seem like in that movie it was Whitey and his brother that and his brother let him run amok throughout the whole city. When you guys were running that, how how accurate was that? Like, were you guys did you guys have like a clear head or were in the back of your mind thinking like, well, we're gonna get pinched or it's just like fuck it because you had I think the right that people from my early from my early you know involvement in it. And actually just like, like I said, bringing, bringing booze out to cop cars and yep. watching, hey, you know, run this envelope over there as I, I got older and things, I watched things just, you know, go away, evidence get lost on certain right. cases. And I just really was jaded. I'm like, oh, fucking crooks. Right. Right. Yeah. Just got a even bigger, on the just got yeah. a bigger organization. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I bet some would even argue the probably biggest crooks are in the at the time, the FBI, right? Right. Had the biggest... Well, I mean, the office, the uh, Boston office had to be shut down because it wasn't like one or two agents. Once oh, the Department the... of Justice came in, um, once the lid came off, they had to shut the whole fucking thing down. Really? Yeah, and it had to go up to uh, New Hampshire until they literally cleaned it up. Wow. That's yeah. nuts. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you remember the first time ever seen in person, Bulger? Yeah. Is there is there something in your mind where you're like, oh, this is the guy yeah, I've been talking about? Like, what was the first interaction like? Um, I stole a guy's car. Hot start. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're gonna meet Bulger, I, right. I, well. I, I stole a guy's car. Um, it was Lincoln Lincoln Continental, one of the, yep. one of the massive battleships. You yeah, know, yeah. The car still had chrome bumpers. Yep. It's like a I boat. think I was probably thirteen or fourteen. Um, I was sent to go collect some money. And I, just a kid, and the guy, he was giving me a hard time. He was behind on a gambling debt. And I'm watching him. I walked into their, their club, and 
I'm like, hey, I'm here to, you know, get something for somebody. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah, well, you know, tell him I'll see him next week. Why are you sending a kid? And you're just a kid. Right. Get the fuck out of my bar. <laughs> but I'm watching him place a bet with another bookie. So I'm like, this dude's trying to, trying to you know, double dip here. Mm, so he's not mm-hmm. going through his standard bookie. He's got this other guy right. that's counting money off. So I grabbed his keys off the bar when he wasn't looking. Took his car. And he showed up at uh, Toby's house. Bullshit. Um, screaming about fucking, you know. I took it right over to Joe Simpson's. Where, oh, wow. Um, the old incinerator used to be a junkyard there. Yep. Chop shop. Yep. Ran 24 hours a day. Ace Auto. <sighs> yeah. So that's where, that's where we worked out of. Yeah. But um, I remember he came there screaming and yelling, you know, going, screaming to my dad that you owe me a brand new Lincoln. Uh, and, yeah. and Jim asked what happened. And I told him, I said, dude, he was paying a bookie. You, I was asked to go there. Um, by Joe Simpson. I said, you know, and I thought these guys were just going to hand me an envelope because I'm a kid. Right, right. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not knowing this guy's fucking giving me a hard time. And um, Jim looked at the guy. He goes, so you're putting money out over here instead of paying this debt here. He goes, let me talk to you outside. Mm. And that was it. I came back in. And my, he goes, you don't owe him nothing. Wow. He, he cleaned he goes, the whole you thing. You don't owe nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, I assume like, if he does some sort of favor for you at that time, he kind of is starting Pulls to you pull in you in a little bit. closer. He like, was always told by um, how he went to, I was, I was, you know, to leave me alone because I was bought, I think, um, oh, I think 17 or 18. I was too young. I was too young to get a mortgage. I remember that. Right, right. So as a gift, I was given a um, condo at Louisburg Square. Wow. And then Jim got one two weeks later right next door. And then... Was I that a gift man, from man. Uh, Whitey? No, it was a gift from my, my other family. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like but he moved in like two doors down, and he used to always come out in the morning and get his paper. And uh, I used to drive my dad's um, construction trucks and stuff yep. like that and check yep. on his jobs. And one of, one of the old FBI photos is funny. He's Jim in his bathrobe grabbing his newspaper. My father's construction truck sitting out front. Oh, wow. So they came down, and they were like, yeah, you're, this is getting sold. You're moving somewhere else. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. That's, crazy. that's yeah. when you when you and Whitey first got got rolling. Was there like that first thing, that first kind of just like oh shit moment where you realize this shit is serious? Like we're not, it's not just jacking cars here and there, maybe collecting. Like that first serious incident. It's a what was more going through your head organized. because you were still young? I was you young, know? but I mean, I grew up really quick. Right. Um, well, you have to in that environment. I'd I imagine. was. I was. I had my own crew going. Mm-hmm. All kids under eighteen. And we were clipping, I don't know, 20 cars a night. And we 20 were running, cars a night? Yeah. And we, were, we had, you know, someone would take us out and they would drive. We'd, that was back when the fucking dealerships used to have a little lockbox on the outside of the window. Uh, right, right, right. 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 Yeah. Oh, so you could snatch <laughs> you just get like right in there, yeah, 10, yeah. 15, smash, 20 keys at a time. We didn't care about smashing the window. Right, right, right. Because right. the cars were being right back, you know, brought right back over here to the south end. Right. And they were being Getting chopped up. Well, they would take the tires, the wheels off. Yeah. They'd pull off the starters. Right. But, you know, radios, and it was going right in the crusher. Then they were getting loaded up on the back of a flatbed and taken right up for scrap metal in Canada. So it was like a 24-hour process. And was that a... Because the Winter Hill gets paid from a tax, right, on all these, whether it's a liquor store or, like, when that truck goes up to Canada and they sell it for scrap, are you guys getting a tax back and that's how you're making your Um, money at the time? Like, what was the revenue stream? The revenue stream was basically... Where Joe Simpson, Toby Rust, Dave Otis, uh, Dave Green the Hog, um, my father, my adopted father, uh, all of those guys kind of made their money and they were just, since a lot of the stuff was done in Boston, Jim got his cut. Mm. Yeah. And was that a, a... And it was kind of like a, well, let's just keep this on that side of the bridge, guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And was it a, I'm always fascinated with like the financials of that like is it a is it a set percent that he's or is he like like there's that um that uh documentary on uh netflix that has the i forget the gentleman but he talks about like his dad owned a liquor store and i guess Whitey pulled up there oh and yeah, said, yeah, like, yeah that was we're the, taking one of those the, the li- yeah whatever that documentaries and he just said we're taking the liquor store and there's no if ands or buts about it right yeah there was um rotary liquors Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Would it, after he would make a move like that, the 
owners are still running it, and every time they're no, 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 that was that, <laughs> different case. They were out of the seat. <laughs> okay, they, they were out of the picture. But that was just like an official office. Oh, okay. So when he wasn't over at Triple O's, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And Triple O's was his like go to bar. Was his bar. Was, that, was his bar. Yeah. Wow. It was his bar? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. And then stories. as the plot thickens. You're you're now pretty much in bed with Winter Hill Gang. You're fully involved. I didn't know about the. You talked about this a little bit off air. The different crews. Like I assumed the Southie Gang was what six guys. Like the the Kevin Weeks group. It was Weeksy, um, Donald. Joe was on the run. There was Matarano. He he went on the run for a while. Um, Cadillac played for the other side. They were uh, okay, to, yeah. <laughs> Cadillac, he was, he's just, you know, he was up in Canada, I yeah. believe. Uh, Matarano was uh, living in his mother's house in Boca Raton. Oh, okay, yep. So it was pretty much just Stevie and Jim. And then Kevin was, like, you know, for lack of better words, he was a lackey. Yep. I mean, yep. obviously, you know, he cut his deal with the feds. Right. He didn't kill anybody. Yep. I can at least say that much for the guy. He yeah. never killed anybody. But when bodies had to be relocated, he just go dig them up. He would dig them up. He would dig them up and rebury them. Like uh, when they had to uh, take uh, the people that were interred at the house in Southie because it was getting sold. Yep. He brought them over the bridge and put them underneath the bridge, the train trestles. Was that at at Whitey's? There was bodies underneath the... Is that... Actually, I think Billy Bulger owned the house. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. (laughs) All on 2nd Street. (laughs) Uh, there was, uh, and they tore it down, right? It's no longer there. Yeah, no, it's not. I believe it's torn down now. Wow, were the, is that where they were storing? Was there was there bodies under? They're buried the, in the basement. Right. Wow. Yeah. Now, when you first started, with, did you have an idea of like what he was doing around town and like what you would be getting into, or was it more yeah, so I just? Think, um, after about a year, which is it's in the it's in my autobiography. Yeah. Um, there was a guy called the Whale. That's what we'll call him. Okay. Um, he ran the chop shop. Okay. And he started stiffing everybody. On, on, you know, pay for the cars, yep. you know. We were supposed to be getting 200 bucks a piece. Then it was 100 bucks. But Because, mm. I mean, when you're there at night and, you know, Joe and the other guys are gone, I'm sitting there and there's a parade of hookers coming in and out. Oh, he's wow. getting drunk. He's, he's, he's a degenerate gambler. Yep. And I'm just like, and he's I'm like, I was kind of off limits. Yep. But I would watch him smack up kids that, you know, trusted me. And other guys, like, you know, what we called the grease monkeys taking apart cars and, and right, stripping right. starters and alternators and stuff that would go on the shelves in the legitimate junkyard. Yep. yep. And I'm just like, fuck. So I, I brought it to Joe in the office. There was a trailer out front. And I'm like, you know, why do I got to work for this fucking guy? Yeah. Why? Yep. why? Why do I have to take orders from this guy? And I was 15 at the time. Wow. And they were like, well, you think you could run it better? I was like, I know I could. Yeah. I said, and people wouldn't be disrespected. And... Toby was laughing, of course, he was, he was drinking. And he's, you know, they kind of talked for a minute, and he goes, well, if you think you can do better, you got to take it from him like a man. There will be no repercussions. So. And in that culture, that meant what? That was like, we're yeah, going to solve I, I, it um, in the street? I paid a hooker to set him up. Wow. To lure him out of his office at night. And then uh, I came to set him with a tire iron and a car jack. Really? <laughs> I ran, got all bloody. And, and this was at 15 years old? 15 years. So how, wow. that, I'm just curious, though, like how were you raised and like how was your father? Because it seems like at fi- you were already <clears throat> mentally way above 15, but you were like a little man, which leads me to believe yeah. that you were raised uh, kind of in a... Well, my traditional schooling went to three weeks in the fourth grade. That was it. Right. And then oh. that was it. Yeah. From there on, that was no more. Wow. And how was the at-home life during that period before you kind of started doing um, your thing in so South My Beach? father wasn't my biological dad, but he raised me as his own son. Um, that's how I got into the construction company. He had you know, a construction company that had been around since the 20s that yep. his father started. And uh, my mother used to use me as uh, the trump card. She would you mm. know, take me all around the country, and then right. when she was broke and needed money, she right. would basically say, well, I'll Here's send him kid. back, but you got to wire me some money. Right. Uh, okay. And, so, uh, so and that tire on. iron moment, was that the first murder? Did he? Oh, he didn't die. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me die. jumping <laughs> at conclusions. <laughs> he didn't die. He didn't die. I've they seen the arms. Well, what's Big at, arms. I was like, oh, 15, one swing from this guy, you're At 15 you're years done. old, and you're like, what's going through your head during um, that time? 
I just like blackout or uh no, I was scared shitless. I was 15 and the yeah. whale weighed 400 pounds and he was over six feet tall. Yep. Yeah, that's and crazy. I hit him the first time and he just wobbled a little bit. Little chicken dance. And I hit him a couple more times yep. and then just the blood and the tire and flew, but he, had been, he was down on one knee. Yep. And I'm like, if he gets up, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm right, lucky. right. There's right. like, you reach that point of no return. I'm like, right. fuck, so I'm looking around. There was a fucking Ford Pinto or something like that. And I had the old style car jack on the back bumper and yep. I went over and I'm kicking the fucking rear fender of the car. Get it to wobble. To get the, yeah. I, maybe that's where the tire iron because I found the tire iron laying there. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, all right, well, I don't know where that fucking thing flew. Yep, yep. <laughs> <So, laughs> right, right after that. Looking forward again. The shop is yours. No, yeah. This is this is definitely so, yours. So um yeah, I got the car to kick the jack out and yep. I just started hitting him with that. And then for whatever reason, I don't know why Joe and Toby, I think they might have been down at Pug's Pub yep. over on Magazine Street. They came, the gate opened, and I'm like, fuck, how do I explain this? And, and he's Joe at the time still he, laying there on the... He's just laying there yeah, gasping, his right. head's all split open. Toby was like, Jesus fucking Christ, kid, the fuck you? And Joe was like, all right, you go in the office. He goes, I said, hey, you told me if I felt it, I could do it. Right, and, and they said no goes, repercussions, yeah, right? We, we didn't think you were going to do it. <laughs> so they took him to the hospital, that's all I know. And then they came back um about two hours later. Oh, really? And he gave me the whale's ring, key ring. He said, hey, Wow. Those, this is you now. Before you take that, you want the responsibility that comes with them? I was like, yeah, I want it. Yeah. At 15. That's, I wonder, do you think there was a, in that two hour span when he left, went to the hospital, was there a talk from the powers that be that are kind of the next chain I of command that were like, hey, again. you're going to take. I never Sean's saw him again. Over. They yeah. told me they took him to the hospital. No one ever saw him again. Wow. Out of that's there. crazy. That's crazy. And I'm also always fascinated with the stories like um, how you guys had so much going on with like the cars, you had murders going on, everything, but you guys were very adamant about not touching drugs. Am I correct in that? Um, not dealing drugs. Not dealing drugs. Not dealing drugs. Well, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and what, what was behind that? Because you would think that, that that revenue stream would be insane, especially for the pull you guys had at that time. The, the thing with drugs is... Um, at that time, you know, they figured out how to start using the Rico case. Right. Oh, mm. yeah. So then the whole town's going down. Once you, once you got into racketeering. Yeah. And, and that came out in the 80s, it, right? Excuse me? That, that Rico case, that, when the feds basically introduced Rico, was that 80-something, right? Well, it was written in 1974 by okay. a fucking professor. And they, just didn't, they never figured out how to take the Racketeering Influence Corrupt Organizations Act right. and apply it to organized crime. Right. They just didn't right. figure it out right. until the 80s. And then gotcha. also with drugs, it's like, it used to be you get caught with a gun. Um, it's automatic a year. Yeah. You go to county, county for a year. Now it's jumped to five years, then second sub, oh. 10 years. Yeah, a little more serious. Drugs, it's, it was always the likelihood of a higher sentence, right. which means guys would flip quicker. Right. right, and besides, it's you're poison in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. Risk. It's your you're own poison, streets. You're poison in the streets. Um, not saying that Jim didn't deal drugs; he did. Right. Um, me and my crew were kind of off limits. You know, um, how he made sure of that yep. it was just those guys were off limits. They're not gonna kick you up nothing. Just right. leave them guys alone. And I didn't have, I didn't have a problem with robbing a drug dealer. You're right, right. But I would sell the stuff. Out of, out, of, out of town. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't care what you do in that neighborhood. Right. We would take it down to New York. We'd take it wherever. Right. We'd send it. But I never, it's like you didn't open it. Yeah, right. Now you're a drug dealer if you open it. But if you take a guy down for six or eight keys or 10 keys or whatever the hell it was. Right. And you just wholesaled it out. Yeah. Yeah. Quick, quick flip. Yeah. Was, was Whitey against drug use? Like, was there a, if you're in this, if you're like it. Well, no, he. he Told everybody that he was, but, but he, he was, wasn't. Yeah, I mean, you look at look at what he did to Red Shea. Yep. Um, which is, you know, Red's a really stand-up guy. He wrote uh, what the fuck was the name of his book? Rat Bastard. Yep. Yeah. yeah. John Red Shea works yep. for the Union. Yep. So lives here local. Right. Um, stand-up guy, man. But you look what Jim did to him. He was having those guys put coke out on the streets back when they used to mm. fold it up in little pieces of paper, right. little envelopes. Right. And then um, he actually sold fucking Red out, man. Wow. Yeah, that's, Red was yeah. a stash house, man. He gave him up. Right. Red ended up doing uh, 12 fucking years, I think. Really? Yeah. So that's... Yeah. At this time, too, I've, I've 
I've always been curious, how did you guys feel about Howie Carr? Because he was like the big talking media head on radio, right, of you guys at the time? He was, and I just think that Howie was, Howie Carr did his job. Same right. as, I just had, um, when was it, last year, honey, when Steve, Steve Kurjikin came to the house, um, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter, investigative reporter. Yep. Um, he's wrote uh, Master Thieves, a okay. Boston organized crime, yep. Yep. pulled off the largest heist in the world. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, he came up to the house and he was like, Sean, I want to see these reports you have. And, and he goes, because your theories on this fucking heist make a lot more sense than everybody else's. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we went back and forth with my attorneys and stuff like that. But he actually came up from, I believe, the Cape. Came up, spent okay. the whole day at the house, hanging out wow. with me. And I'm like, you can read the reports that we got. How did you get these? I right. said, I can't tell you how I got them. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was Jim Bolger's uh, last statement after his arrest. Really? Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, that's <sighs> so with that's everything, looking back now on how everything kind of ended, like what are your genuine thoughts on Whitey Bolger? Fuck him, it's a rat. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was Matter of fact, there's, uh, one of those reels is we're actually, I took the producers, uh, the film crew over to the tracks because they wanted to see... Where was the where where was the body dump? Where was the yep. murder pit? So I took them over there. And they're filming and they're talking to my wife. They're talking to my buddy Jimbo, from, you know, from the area here. Yeah, that's my sidekick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, they're like, "What are you doing?" And I'm just like, I ran over. I'm just taking a piss on the stanchion. Yeah, like, I'm pissing on fucking Whitey. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> and was that the the dumping grounds? Was like the marshes, right? Mm-hmm. Was that that was like yeah. an easy spot to He's right. Right over the line in Quincy. Okay. That's crazy. And what was that last statement from Whitey? What was that statement? What was his last? Um, he implicated myself and my uncle. Really? And, and being behind the cleanup of the Isabella Stewart heist. Wow. <laughs> and is this is this around the time, too, when, so right, you know the uh, parking garage right across the street here? I believe it was... 1980s, late 80s, they did that whole Brinks truck heist, which is like loosely based off of like the movie The Town. Yeah. Here. Were you guys running with any of those guys or that was a totally different crew? Any of the. You're talking what, about Marty? What do they call him? Uh, yeah. What's the. Uh, You're talking about Marty O'Brien. Yeah. He was my handball partner. In oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, let's go. <laughs> well, he was your I handball have, partner. I have been to prison for a bank robbery. Is that right? Yeah. yeah oh, right. let's talk about that. That's the one. <laughs> Crime, I mean, amongst others, obviously. In my head, though, that has to be one of the most daring going into because you know the consequences right. are so high. Because what's a, at that time, you rob a bank, what's the a likely sentence? Hey, it's up to the judge. I didn't get caught. I got away. Really? Um, the driver got caught. Oh. And after I was gone for I don't know, four months spending the money, yep. it was it's just say it was arranged. That I turned myself in. Yep. Yeah. Um, because he had just done a. What oh, fuck did Billy do? Did eighteen? He did a seven to ten for a bank. Got out. Was out for fucking a year or two. Then did an eighteen to thirty for an armored car. So at this time they were like, Sean, use the old man as a driver. He was in his sixties yep. or something. Here's where you're gonna be. Just have the car running, and right. I'll be back. And did you tell him ahead of time, like, hey? We're about, I'm going to go well, in. Well, he's dead now. I mean, so it's in my book. Yep. And at that time, he would have got the three strikes. He would have went back to prison. Okay. Because they yep. caught him. Had downright arrested and three him strikes, and then it's later. life. Yeah, he parked at a, I, where he parked was behind a loading dock. Mm-hmm. A block away or two blocks away or whatever the fuck it was. Um, underneath the fucking surveillance camera and he oh, used his own plates. Damn. Oh, man. So they had him dead to rights. Like a, <laughs> right. Once they started canvassing CCTVs. Took his own car to a bank yeah, robbery. Yeah. <laughs> He's basically waving but at the I mean, cameras. Thinking, I'm thinking this guy's already done an armored car. He's already done right. a bank. Right. He's a pro. He's in fucking victory. Right, right. He knows better. So that's crazy. It's like, How right. much did you get away with on the that bank yeah, robbery? Just, How much did you leave with in away? cash? It was never determined. Really? Oh. So, but I, I went to Puerto Rico um, for four months. Was that straight away? Like pretty much once you left the bank, you were like, yeah, I got it. Um, right. Once we left the bank. I went back to a uh, hotel in Revere Beach. Yep. Cut the money up, gave Billy his, his cut. And then from there, someone else picked me up. Made a couple of arrangements with an attorney. Because, um, you know, you can't go through fucking airports even back then. With right. 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 You know, and, um, 
Took like 9,500 in cash. So I'm going to Puerto Rico. Yo. Nice. Mm-hmm. Smart man. Yo. I'll tell you, I, oh, you know, down there, my buddy had a cantina down there in uh, Carolina. I said, I'll send you some banking information. Why are the rest of the money down there? Wow. That's crazy. So I'm- once they told me Bill was going to, you know, get a natural sense, they were going to indict him on habitual. Yeah. I said, all right, work it out. The attorneys worked it out. I said, I'll turn myself in, but it's going to be a couple months. Right. And in that time you were staying down in Puerto I was Rico. Down, I was in Puerto Rico yeah. yep. and then bounced back to Florida in and out. Um, and then, um, so I got indicted um, out in Norfolk Superior Court, Norfolk County. Yep. Because the bank was in Quincy. Okay. Gotcha. And um, the judge was a really good guy, Judge, judge Moriarty. It was his last day on the bench oh, before wow. retiring. I was his last case. Really? Ever be heard. And he said, you know, for being such a young guy, he goes, just for the record, Mr. Smith knew nothing about this bank robbery. I said, knew not a fucking thing, dude. Wow. Right? And he goes, I said, I'm just doing the right thing so this guy don't die in prison. Right, right. He said, wow. All right. He said, well, unfortunately, I cannot give you less than two and a half years. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to give you a day over that. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's what, that bank heist, though, what, how'd it go? Any any weapons used? Any uh, it's was a the, little old it, lady at the teller? Yeah, I, <laughs> you're like, hey, Diane. <laughs> I'd like it to was def- funny. It was um, it's in the book. It was an inside job. And what's the the name of the book too? It's the uh, the Devil to Pay. The Devil the, to Pay: A yep. Monster's Road to uh, Redemption. Yep. Yeah. And you said that was a uh, yep. that bank was an inside. You had someone on the inside. That was that was the FBI's theory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, their biggest thing uh, okay. was um, because they they you know once they started pulling the stuff and I went in, I went in looking one way, and like I, I believe his name was uh, Forrest Schuin was the uh, bank robbery task force guy for the FBI at that time. Yep. And he said, I just want to know. He said, you know, we caught you between the cameras. It's eight seconds. How the fuck did you ch- totally change your appearance, clothes in eight seconds? So, yeah. How'd you do it? Same way basketball players do tearaway suits. Oh, oh. Shirt. the rip away pants. Rip tearaway suits. <laughs> the rip aways, dude, with that bag of cash. That. And did you have a uh, some sort of mask or I had a, face I had covering or just a hat and hat. glasses and yep. lost all that and just I look like a fat dude chasing a bus down the street. <laughs> a classic. Oh man. That's and nuts. when what was your first? Now we're getting a little further. I'm sure this is in pretty heavy in the book as well. What was your first real crime that led to some serious time? Assaults. Uh, a lot of assaults. Assaults, yeah. People collecting money and stuff like that. And was it mostly like people are not paying, so now we yeah, have to go knock to on doors? Deck, like, and, you know, it's, once you started doing stuff like that, I mean, there was a, I don't know what the fuck chapter it was. I ended up going to a, a private club with another faction, we call them the Yaks. Yep. Um, is that a is Yaks like a abbreviation for something? Or yeah, Yugoslavians, Albanians, and Croatians. Oh, okay. Uh, the so Yaks. I went there really the just to talk to the guy. I was sent there to talk to the guy. Yep. And guy got really disrespectful and spit in my face, and I ended up biting his nose off and stuffing a <sighs> liquor bottle, the neck of a liquor bottle up his ass. Jeez. Wow. Escalated so fast. <laughs> Imagine you think you're going in just to talk to a guy. Right. You're like, I do owe Sean some serious money. Yeah. And then you leave there with a bottle in your ass. up your ass, dude. Whew. That was one of the things you knew is um um I was given a job by Jim, and it's again it's details in the book. We yeah. changed some of the bar names because you know, a lot of these guys, not everybody's dead, not right. everybody was a rat. Right. Yeah. So um I was, there was a couple guys that uh, robbed the Chinese betting parlor. Mm. I was in the newspapers. Uh, I believe the Globe did a story. I ended up with like four or five million or something like that out of that. And wow. they gave Jim a cut. And then I remember showing up. And um, Jim was with a couple other guys um, down the South Shore. It was a men's club down there. And he walked in. He goes, Sean, why don't you do me a kid, he called me. Kid, count the money, Sean and the other guy was like, Jim, I counted it three times. He said, I, 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 Sean, I'll count the money. And everybody was adamant that, you know, all the money was there. And then he gave me a figure and he goes, what's wrong with the picture, Sean? I said, it's light about 150000 if that's what mm-hmm. was taken. He, he looked at the other guys and he said, that's why this kid's going places. So you were the only one telling the truth. 
No, I was the only one that figured out that the percentage they, they held back. Oh, okay. No okay. one else was I see they're, what you're they're saying. looking at a you know stack right. of money on the table, right? And they're like, oh, but the percentage that he should have got is his tribute, right? Right. So, um, that was kind of the first job, that first serious job. Yep. Um, what did that that job lead to in? I had time. to go track the guys down. Okay. I had yeah, to track yeah. them down and um, find out where they hid the money. Yep. Uh-huh. The the 150000 No, the all of it. Oh, okay. All, all right. All of it now. Oh, wow. Yeah. <sighs> and that, the outstanding balance was what? You said $4 million, something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was, it was probably a little over 3.3 something million or something like that. So Bulger sends you to go track down this. Find the guy. And are you going by million. yourself? Out to go track down that money too, if you're gonna roll up on these people, or do you have some sort of backup, just in case they do kind of, you know, tell you to fuck off or something? Well, it's, it, once you once you read the book, it's it's really simple how you know some people set people up. Right. They just want to just not be involved. In right. But, yeah. Right. Well, uh, yeah, they ended up um, took them to a bar, you know, took them down the basement and figured out where they hit it. Wow. Damn. There's so much. And going is on. the it's in the book where it's revealed. Where the yeah. cash is stashed, yeah. basically. Yeah, and you got to read the book. I was always fascinated. What did Whitey have going on with the lottery? And how was he working that shit? <laughs> <laughs> how was he working that shit? He hit the lottery. <laughs> he hit the lottery a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> New England was different back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> New England was different back then. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's another cases. thing too. What do you think going around like Dorchester and Southie nowadays compared to you know when you guys were running it? Like, you know, I one of my last cases, I think uh, last major case, uh, I think I got um, she retired now. Judge Ball, Carol Ball. Yep. we used to call her Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. <laughs> she, she's from Southie. She lived in the Point. Yeah, she's a Superior Court judge, and um. We got involved with um, some Chinese guys. Mm-hmm. Um, robbery. Yeah. And uh, you know, a couple people got shot, you know, during the gunfight. Yeah. We just didn't know that the fucking DEA, fucking FBI, the fucking Secret Service, for Christ's sakes, we're looking at the reports, we're like, what oh, the fuck? Damn. They had them all under surveillance. They were, they were watching this fucking fish company. This is like that scene in The Departed with the microchips. And they all it, meet. It's kind of just and like And it's on that. surveillance. and yeah. But, um, yeah, they had them on film, and they, they filmed the whole fucking shootout. Really? So wow. it was like, you know, one of, my, one of my guys got shot. So I stuffed him in the minivan. And then an overzealous, and what kind of, the whole case fell apart because we had um, Sergeant, uh, State Police Sergeant Greeley was in on the task force thing. Yeah. But he was carrying around a BPD radio. And he was off duty, and his whole story mm. fell apart under questioning. And then finally, um, the judge kept asking, well, why are all these federal agencies on this police report yep. when this happened on Farragut Street in South Boston on right. the waterfront? And, well, we can't, revolve, you know, we, can't, we, can't, we can't talk about that right now. You know, we don't want to, it's, it's under investigation. And she right. said, well, right now we're in Suffolk Superior Court. Right. And she chalked it up to um, territorial dispute between two factions. Okay. Shoot out. And she said, you know, no one got killed. No one innocent got hurt. Um, so we cut a deal. Um, the driver got probation because yep. he, he wasn't involved in a shootout. Um, Mikey got 18 months because he just came home from doing three to five. Damn. <laughs> he had to go back. Comes home and goes right back. Timing, yeah, he got, like, oh, my he bed's still here. Yeah. Yeah, his arm <laughs> almost got fucking blown off for crazy sakes. <laughs> oh and then... Um, I, uh, she, she asked me, she goes, Sean, if we give them their deals, you are obviously the one that, you know, had the Michael Myers mask on. We know. Right. Is that your go-to, the Michael Myers mask? Yeah. 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 I'd be shitting myself. It's pretty badass. (laughs) She she goes, I'll tell you what, because my lawyer said, your honor, he goes, this happened in South Boston. He goes, you still live in South Boston. Because what happened? They were selling fucking, that, that was before the fentanyl craze and all. Oh. They were selling heroin. They were selling heroin to kids. And uh, I talked to him one time. And I said, listen, guys, I'm not going to tell you how to make your money because I don't deal with that right. crap. Right. But this is like the 16th kid that overdosed. <sighs> don't let it happen again. Right. And uh, fucking a week later, 14, 15-year-old kid. 
experiment, boyfriend and girlfriend, mm. sniffed a line, yep. dead. So we just went back. We, you know, we didn't know they were in the middle of a huge drug deal right. at the time. Oh, damn. So everybody was filming. Just perfect timing. Yeah. Well. Well, I guess. <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so she, uh, she asked me if I'd take five years out there. The Christmas Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. <laughs> Christmas Carol. <laughs> because if you would take five it years. It was always Christmas presents for her. She was uh, if you were okay. a good, good guy, it was yeah. Christmas. We call it Christmas Carol. Yeah. Right. Uh. And you took you said yes, I'll yeah, take I'll take five years as long as the other guys years. as long as the driver didn't get any time. Right. And the other guy only got eighteen months. And was that the first time now going into jail? Or have you no, been no, in that and was out? Like the last major Sentence was a five years. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I think that was uh, 2011 or something. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Because you did 24... 24 years and nine months total. Yeah. In like 18 Unbelievable. days. Wow. I'll get the hours and figure it out in a second. Yeah, that's... Yeah. And you said this off air as well. You were in lockdown majority of that time. Majority of that time, yeah. What? Um, what I'm always curious, mentally, what do you do in lockdown to keep yourself sane? You had a Bible... But what do you, is there any like rituals or, you know, how do you stay strong mentally? It's a situation where it's either it's going to make you or break you. Yeah. You mean, I, you, you look at, look at um, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got yeah. friends um, that were in the same block as he was uh, P1. And yep. then they got bounced over uh, because he was having this little homosexual right. thing going right. on there. Yeah. Right. Which is fine. Whatever right. you're float your fucking boat, dude. I 2023, know. am I right? Yeah, Swing but, uh, whatever you want. All right. But, uh, Jeez. Just, Sometimes guys realize, you know, holy fuck, you know, especially in that situation where it's like, yeah. I'm never going home. Yeah. Right. Never going home. Right. Um, there was the other kid there, I forgot his name, uh, a racist dude that went on a random shooting spree over in Brockton. Oh, like, when guys oh, like yeah, that yeah, came yeah. in, we yep. were like, you know, <laughs> it sounds morbid, but we would take bets and say, what do you think is going to last, a month or two before he hangs it up? Damn. Huh? And hangs it up, of course. And, and then you have the other suicide. kid that, that um, the Craigslist killer. Yeah. Mm. Medical school. Yep. I mean, he knew, you know, he knew his human anatomy. Right, yeah. right. He committed suicide in his cell with a ballpoint pen. Yeah, wow, that's yeah. insane. Punctured his femoral artery. Right. So did you, when you first went in there for a solid block of time, like, did you already have a little bit of a reputation going since you were, you know, doing yeah, the thing in Southie? Yeah, it's a, like... And how was that walking in with that reputation? I was... Treated well. Like yep. when you would come in, there's always an inmate, you know, convict. Convicts that work like intake, that's their job. Right. So they know who's coming in because right. your property gets shipped. Like, you know, if you're getting uh, moved, you don't, it's not like you just. Just show up out of. Yeah, out of the yeah. blue. They know, people know you're coming to the institution right. ahead of time. Right. Oh, wow. Because you'll have to pack all your property up my TV, my hot pot, my right. fan, my clothes, my shoes books, whatever, and I have to turn it into a property offer at the prison, you know, right. whatever institution I'm in. And then it gets shipped. And you might you might not leave for a little yeah. bit later. So, I mean, people know you're coming in. And usually, you know, um, if your property is chasing you, which 95% of the time, you might give it to the property officer and turn right. it in, but it sits in a warehouse and you're at a new institution for a month or two right. before your shit gets there. So, oh, um, damn, so you're just out. No, not really. Of... Um, like, guys guys will know good guys. Yeah. And, like, you know, time you, I would, you know, you generally, um, I think one of the funniest times was uh, it was in um, OCCC, Old Connolly Correctional Center out in Bridgewater. And a uh, property officer stopped me. He's like, Hicks, take an empty laundry cart with you. They're going to crack the cells on the main, because it's one main long holiday, yep. uh, hallway that goes all the way down and bangs the right and goes down. Okay, yeah. And it's probably, goddamn, got to be about a good quarter of a mile long. <sighs> yeah. So you go damn. all the way down the ramp, and then you bring a right. And um, so I was like, why, my property here? He's like, now nah, they're just going to crack the, the block doors for you, and guys got, got laundry bags. And oh, they got, they're giving you they're some. Gonna, you know, yeah. they got some stuff for you. And the time right. I get down to my block, which is all the way at the fucking end, um, orientation block, um, I had a loaner TV. Wow. Wow. Headphones, radio, um, fucking all the food I could eat for fucking six right. months. Right. Sneakers, Levi's jeans. Right. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's fashionable in there. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievably stylish. Yeah. Wow. And you're doing, you know, carjackings at an early age. 
You did, uh, you know. No car jackets. No car jackets. No car jackets. <laughs> just, car, just clipping new cars. Oh, okay, <laughs> clipping new, right, right. Just, so, just so the jury knows. <laughs> yeah, um, car jackets sell some savage shit. Right, you right, guys, okay, gotcha. Um, in the height of everything, did you guys have any correlations with any families out of like New York or any any of those mob situations going on over there? Yeah, at when, all? I was, um, when I was filming, um, when I was filming for Ample Entertainment, um, Billy Ricci from uh, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys know your mob history. Well, he's an Italian guy. Um, yep. That's where they dug up. It was his mill building. Okay. Where, um, dude, what the fuck, you know, um, Stephen Fleming, oh, the yeah. rifleman, mm -hmm. yep. ratted Cadillac Frank Soemi out um, about DeSaro, Stephen DeSaro's murder, who right. used to own the Channel Nightclub. Right. And told him that's where the body was buried. Damn. And then you had um, fucking Bobby DeLuca down in Rhode Island. Yep. He turned rat because he got pinched on something. And, of course, at 72 or 74 years old, he decided to knock up a 26-year-old stripper. Yeah. And now yep. he sees God and he wants to fucking all. Oh. Right, right. So then Billy, you know, Billy got out of it. Um, we actually had the same federal attorney, Kevin Salvaggio. Oh, is that right? Out mm -hmm. of Rhode Island. Yeah. But that's where they found the remains after, what, 30 years? Wow. Jeez. Was on um, Bill's mill building. Yeah. Wow. What was the worst crime? Like, did you ever take someone's life? I, I, got, I served time for attempted murder. Really? And that's probably, in the criminal organization, murder's got to be one, if not one A, of like... There's no statute of limitations on murder. Oh, wow. That's a good, that's a good quote right there. That's a good quote. <laughs> well, Been convicted of attempted murder. Yeah. Wow. And there's that, I got to assume, that's what led to majority of the prison time? Not just basic crime. Yeah, yeah. Basic yeah. crime. Yep. A lot of robberies, a lot of violence. Yep. How was it with... Uh, a lot of conspiracy stuff. Yeah. Is that what drives you nuts with, like, you know, we talked about earlier, but, like, you see the movies, uh, the FBI is coming out with their own theories. Right. And you know the fact. Does it, like, kind of piss you off? Or you're like, oh, these idiots are think it's one way when really it's, you know... As a collective... The FBI couldn't find his dick taking a piss with both hands. <laughs> Simple as that, dude. Girl, that's a good, perfect. GM, dude. Yeah. That is yeah. cool. Trademark, Trademark that. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's, we got threatened about just one chapter. I talk about the Isabella yeah. heist in my, in my autobiography. Yeah. It's just my theory on it. Right. But what it is is we, you had Steve Kerjikin come and say, Sean, uh, let me pick your brain on your theories because it makes right. a lot more fucking sense than right. what I'm fucking investigating after you know 20 odd right. years in his book um we have arthur brand from the netherlands who is the world's leading stolen art detective they call oh. him the indiana jones of stolen art he's oh, also the okay. author of um hitler's horses okay yep and um he's you know world famous and yeah. he's a dear friend of mine is he on this case the what's the um by fenway that art museum that's big, what i'm talking about the yeah, yeah. yeah okay yep yeah <laughs> Largest heist in the history yeah, of the world. Yeah, This is a robbery, Same. I'm pretty sure, is the documentary on Netflix on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Well, that's Stephen Kerjikin yes. in that. Yes, yep. yes, But I, yep. I just, when, when, I, when he asked me, we were talking, I said, you were the best part of it? Because I know Miles Connor, too. Yep. Um, we had the right. same attorneys. and I was actually at Miles Connor's. They asked me to go to his book signing, which was at the, the Beachcomber um, in uh, Wollaston Beach. Yep. Feds are all over there taking pictures Damn. of everybody. And um, uh, what the fuck was um, the fuck was the name of his? Art of the Heist. Yep. It was a hypothetical. Okay. All about the robbery. But we know he didn't do it because he was right. sitting in prison waiting for, you know, a murder case to get overturned. Right. But, you know, of course, in his book, he said, well, I planned it out. I just got pinched and someone else took my idea. Mm. There's a lot of theories out there. <laughs> Is there... Does do you know, and maybe it's you yourself or someone else, do you know where that, because that art is still MIA, right? Well, it's funny, is um, Arthur Brand's actually writing a blurb for the jacket of my book. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, he said, we just had a, did a uh, Zoom call, whatever the yep. FaceTime crap is. Yeah, there. yep. And um, he got into some stuff on, a few years ago, uh, before I met my wife. <laughs> I was on vacation in upstate New York, and he called me and he said, I'm having pints of, he was in Ireland. Yeah. I'm like, why are you in Ireland? Dude? He's like, I got a lead on the Isabella. And I'm like, what are you doing? He told me who he was drinking with. And I'm like, what are you trying to do? He said, 
I, I'm going to pay the ransom. They're going to return. I said, get the fuck out of the pub, dude, because they're going to kill you and keep the money. And um, he still credits me and says, you saved my life. Yeah. Because the next guy that did it is just uh, the Viper. Took mm -hmm. a fucking film crew to the same clan. He's disappeared. Damn. Yeah. Film crew too? They no, just whole, the Viper. Just the Viper. Yep. Yeah. The whole crew. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. well, guys, we don't know. You know. He walked in with cameras and shit, and I just told him, so Arthur's going to read a, um, a blurb for the dust cover. Oh, okay, um, yep. And basically, uh, he said, you know, um, he actually tweeted about it, and he said, I can't wait to read Sean's book because it's the closest we'll ever know yeah. to what really happened. I feel like, and this is just my 30,000-foot view, you have such a clear... Like, even just the way you speak, it's very clear and concise. Like, I can see, yeah, I, I got to assume your side of the story is, in my opinion, probably all fact, right? Like, you just seem, <sighs> even at 15, taking over that, yeah. that you I know, think that what 15-year-old is that? I look at, you know, the facts, and I'm looking at things like I've turned down a couple of um, offers. Yep. One was to host a, a true crime show, and I'm like, "What do you guys want? What do you guys really want me to do here?" Mm, right, right. right. My agent was like, "Well, there are all these true crime networks, and this is a production company. They want you to host the show." And I said, "And do what?" Right. Well, they want to have you interact with law enforcement around the country and look at cold case files and see if there's oh, something wow. that you see through the eyes of a criminal that they're not seeing. Mm. I said, "I'm not doing that." Right. <laughs> Right. I'm doing that. <laughs> almost just like fuck? ratting these, yeah, all these people out. Like, uh, you got away with it. You got away with it. Because, right, you know, right, like, exactly. I had a judge one time say some, I was smirked or something. He goes, something funny? I said, no. Nah. He goes, you happy with the sentence? It's a plea agreement? I said, yeah, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to sit in a freaking county waiting trial. Right. Because that county doesn't honor a 52A, which means you go directly upstate and wait trial. Oh, I said, okay. I'm not sitting in a county jail. That's right. not happening. Right. Yeah. I said, because they don't do 52 A's. Right. And I could petition it, but I'm going to sit there for six months with a bunch of, you know, drunk drivers yeah. and, and yeah. domestic violence guys yep. and just fucking weirdos. Right. No right. offense to anybody, but it's right. just, I don't have time for that when you face them. Yeah. So um, I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm more than happy to do the time for what you just caught yeah. me for than do the time for what you didn't catch me yeah, for. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, right, right. Were you... When you're out, are you constantly looking over your shoulder? Like, are you on, no. on a day-to-day? -day? No. Absolutely. Is it fairly calm? I, I hear like, and this is just, what was the nickname for Kevin Weeks? You had two, a, weeks. Two, two weeks. Two weeks. That's what it took him to fuck, flip. Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah two I know weeks. there was a documentary I was watching uh, with him where he's like, the day-to-day -day was quite boring because you're just, and is that fairly accurate? Well, there's, a, there's a sound bite um, that... Uh, with Kevin Silvaggio, my, my, my lead federal attorney. Yep. And you, we're more like family. I mean, they come, yeah. they come to our house, you know, his wife, his kids. Yeah. yeah. We have dinners together. Yeah. They, they're there for filming. And um, producer asked him something, and he was like, the producer goes, Sean, don't you, basically the same thing you just said. He goes, don't you worry about, you know, and, I said, and Kevin just blurted it out. No, because they're all fucking dead. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Kevin's dead. Yeah. yeah. And what's the, I know we touched on the book. I want to make sure we plug everything for as well. What's, give us the kind of the synopsis on that docu-series and then the reality TV stuff as well. Um, Cause you so, got a ton cooking, a oh, yeah. ton of stuff cooking. God doesn't stop, right? I don't know why my wife puts up with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the docu, docu-series is uh, with Greg Donis, who yep. just, uh, he's currently, um, what the well, oh, my phone's over there. He sent me all fucking resume. He's done. Okay, yep. He just did the Bisbing documentary movie yep. with Showtime. Yep. Um, 40, 40 year old something or other. I mean, he's got like 10 or 12 shows on TV right now. Right. And, but he's a dear friend of mine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I met him through my business partner, Rotten Rowan, who's my drummer, for yep. Test Human. And uh, he fucking introduced me to him I don't know, a year and a half ago or something. Yep. Like, maybe a little over that. I was doing, a, I was on tour. And uh, he was just a really cool dude. And he's like, I want to meet my, my TV producer friend. And I'm like, I don't need another one of those. Yeah. But he never, he never said to me, hey, I want to do... He took a year, over a year and a half of just coming to my show. Right. Going out to lunch with them. You know, yep. we're in San Diego on the pier. Um, or we're down in Venice. Yeah. Just, just stopping by his house with Roland, you know, and just talking to him. And he just... He said, I just want to get to know you before I pitch this to you. Right. And then he was, you know kind of balls deep in the fucking OJ thing. Yeah, Which is right. going really yeah. good now yeah. because he's got fucking... I've, I've seen some of the shit that's in this before. It was 
out, man. And I'm like, what the fuck? But the, the prosecu prosecutorial misconduct. Mm -hmm. Like, there was footprints in the blood on the victim's backs. Really? And they were never made into evidence. He got them because what happened was the uh, subcontractor, the photographer, reached out to Greg and said, hey, I've got, like, hundreds of crime scene photos that never made it into wow. evidence in trial. And they did the research to find out <clears throat> legally if he could use this stuff. And um, they said, yeah, it's yours. You own it. Right. Told the photographer, destroy it if you want. Greg bought it. Wow. Yeah. How come that was never brought into evidence? Just like, yeah. yeah. Wow. And you're pretty heavy in the music side, huh? Yeah. You're, yeah. That's what we were well, listening to Hurley's a too. DJ back here. Now we're yep. talking. <laughs> the, the collab of a lifetime, potentially. <laughs> you know? Wow. Mm. That's amazing. That's and amazing. I want to close out with, with where can everybody find you on social? Um, I want to make sure when your book drops, what's the date of that? Um, March 24. The book drops. Yeah, it drops. It's out of Blackstone Publishing. A Devil to Pay. The Devil to Pay. The Devil to Pay. Mobster's Road to Perdition. Yep. Um, I like that. Of course, I forgot the, forgot the fuck. We can throw it up. We'll throw it up <laughs> on the screen post-production. Um, yeah, the Deadline did an exclusive on it uh, okay. last year. They've got a photo of it. And then um, they're drafting a new press release Deadline exclusive coming out about my partnership with um, between Brendan Deenan, yep. um, who is the president of Blackstone, who is also the author of fucking books. He, did, he just did Morbius, then the movie. Um does Walking Dead. I don't know, he's oh, okay. Like wow. 17, 18 books. But yeah. He's like, you know, the That's number huge. one ad app guy yeah. in the industry. Yeah. So, I mean, Blackstone's got a huge name. Yep. Corporate offices are out in Oregon and Manhattan. I deal directly with Brendan. And nice. Wow. Just for like young men out there, your piece of advice for anyone who wants to like turn their life around and, and maybe it's, they don't have mob ties and stuff like that. But I think seeing somebody like you, who went through the stuff that you went, went through and were able to turn your life around, start living a good life. You're in Worcester, right? You love it. You got yeah. the grandchildren yeah, now. Right. You're not looking over your shoulder. What piece of advice would you give to young men out there that want to turn their life around that may have not had it as serious as you or maybe they did, but what would that advice be? Um, it, it's one, it, there's no badge of honor about going to prison. Yeah. Um, I never woke up in the morning and Thought, oh, great, I'm, I'm in a good mood today. I'm, I'm going to go mm -hmm. hurt somebody today. Right. I, did, I took no pleasure out of that, man. I used to have to come home. I don't know how many fucking mirrors I broke, just yeah. disgusted with myself. Um, I look at the, the pain that I caused my own family. Like, my daughters grew up without me. My children grew up without me. They were right. in diapers when I started going away. And then now they're back in my life here and there. But, you know, they, I try to be a father, and it causes, you know, they're closer, they're closer to my wife, their stepmother, than they are to me. They hate right. me. I mean, they, they love me and they hate me at the same time because if I see someone they're with, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm like, that guy's no good. He's a yeah. punk. You know? Yeah, you can smell it out. Like, I just, Well, yeah, when you walk in my house and you're yeah. this, this fake thug, I'm like, well, wait a second. Yeah. Right. You're, you're not going to come in and, you know, open the door and, right. and, and grab groceries and, and help her carry, like, my... My daughter, my granddaughter out, you're going to make her right. pregnant, come in, right. up, up icy stairs, Jeez, and yeah. while you're sitting in a car smoking a cigarette? No. Right, right. Yeah, oh, I'm not, not happening. that crap, dude. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, just, it's, my biggest thing is I want to change my legacy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. my, my wife, she's my soulmate, my best friend, you know, of course, she's Irish from Charlestown. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can we talk about, uh, we, can, we, talk, can we talk about Lori? He's a character. Yep. <laughs> so, Charlestown guy, I'm assuming. Uh, Charles, yeah, Charles, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So he just got out. Um, now he's out. Now, now that he's off of uh, the bracelet, federal bracelet. He's yep. in, well, how old is Lori? Got to be 80 something, right? He's in his 80s. Wow. Damn. But uh, he's done, I don't know what, 40 years, 45 years for banks and armored cars. <sighs> and then, um, actually, it's funny as, Charlene's other uncle, who took him in, who's a retired Boston firefighter, and now he works for the Teamsters Union here at the Garden. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. What a full <laughs> circle. circle. <laughs> so, oh, my God. When I, when I first bumped into Lori, we had a film crew there. Yep. And he was like, 
little little he's like, like he's fuck, fuck yeah fucking <laughs> yeah yeah on. i'm like dude you just did fucking how many years why are you on that and he goes son of a bitch if they're not trying to stick me with fucking killing three fucking prison uh or uh armored car guards back in the 70s or fucking 80s i don't fucking know yeah damn. But they can't find the avenue whatever <sighs> so they had him on the ankle bracer for a while and he had to stay basically in house arrest right hun yeah wow and he's a funny guy, man. But we got him yep. on we got him on camera and he loosened yep. up. He's like, I know, yeah, you got you come from good stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this um I caught the the armored trucks and bank is this loosely the the guy for the town? No, no, no. He different was, crew. He was like he was like sixties, fifties, Oh, Okay, 60s. okay. Before yeah, gotcha, way gotcha, prior. gotcha. Um the town guys were um Marty O'Brien, a couple other guys, man. Yep. They're all doing life sentences. Yeah, yeah. Right. Those uh, unfortunately, man, sometimes Guys get overzealous. Mm. You know, they executed those guards. Really? Yeah. Wow. The up in New Hampshire. They took the truck up to New Hampshire and executed them. Wow. Do you find it hard now to be around Italians? <laughs> you know, being so Irish. No. Do you hate just... <laughs> no, I've got... Um, oh, I don't have a fucking Irish attorney, do I? Today, we got to change that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to work on that. I got Zero. Yep. Lapuccino. Oh, wow. Um, and Julo. So Fazio. Yeah, Those aren't Irish. Right, so you're wow. They all got, so you, a while. They all got vowels. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. I love it. Yeah, I just, you know, what really made me really think about it, because I was kind of like on the fence when I got out, and then yeah. I met Charlene, and I'm like, all right, I got to do the right thing here. Right. Um. We used to live in, we had a condominium before we moved to our house. And um, I was walking the dog. This freaking kid, man, came running up. He's like, Sean, Sean, Sean. And I'm thinking, what the fuck, he either wants a cigarette, because I smoked at the time. Yeah. Or he's going to ask me for a couple bucks. Because I'm like, he's too young. He couldn't have been more than 16 or 17. Right. I said, I couldn't have done anything with him. And then I'm going, did I do something to his uncle or his dad or something, maybe? Yeah. And he was like, oh, man, dude, that mobster guy, right? Dude, you did all that time in prison and you shot people and all that shit. So fucking cool. Oh, and I remember wow. going back Ooh. and I told Charlene, I'm like, I felt physically sick yeah, that that's why he was looking up to me. Yeah. Like idolizing you for, yeah, yeah for the wrong right, thing. Right. right. So now it's like, how do I change my legacy? Because in my mind, it just was on, it was on loop. Yeah. And yep. I'm like, what's going to happen when I'm dead and gone in 20, 25 years, 30 right. years, whatever, man. Yeah. Um, People coming up to my children and my yeah. granddaughter and my grandsons and saying, you know, remembering me for that. Right, right, so right. Now it's just like, it makes sense why you got out and immediately found a new mission. You know, right. you got into you own your own construction yeah, business. Keeping, well, keeping her from kicking my ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's Irish. Yeah. She's Irish. I'm Irish. Yep. It's you know we have a, a loving home. Yes, yeah. she's got no problem speaking her mind. Oh yeah, I'm I'm Irish yeah. as well. You know, so it's I, I know <laughs> those Irish households. Guy, you know, it's, it's just, but it is fascinating. Like you you hated that because I remember when I was reading a couple articles on you as well, and it said like there were a couple guys in the crew that kind of or the couple guys that you ran around with that kind of fed off that. Like yeah. if they were going to be the muscle, they kind of fed off that. Whereas you were very much just, not quiet, about right? it. And then, yeah. and then kind of Learned. fell into the drink from that. Yeah. yeah. Because of just having to live in my own skin. Right. So it's like, and I've always found, man, you, you learn more by listening than talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you yeah. know, there was never really, I didn't want, I wanted what they had was more like the respect and stuff. Like I always had, you know, nice cars, nice homes, yeah. money and stuff like that. But it's like, at the same time, it didn't have to be flashy and, and didn't want to hang out with everybody afterwards if you had to go do a job or something like that. It's just, right. I want to go be my, by myself and just digest this. Right, yeah. right. Just digest it. See, that's right. weird. When, when I watch those other podcasts, like uh, Sammy the Bull and stuff, it almost yeah. feels like he thrives off that type of stuff when I yeah. listen to yeah, him talk. Yeah, a little like bit of he, a... He, you could you could almost see it in his aura, dude. Like getting yeah. excited again. Like he's kind of one of those guys that maybe well, thrived mean, off yeah. that shit. Doesn't want to change his legacy. He gave up. You know? yeah, he doesn't want to change his legacy. I mean, you look what he did. He he, he gave up Gotti. Yep. Yeah. They took Gotti down because of Gambino. Right. And um, what did he do five years for twenty murders. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, it's crazy. five years for twenty murders. Right. Witness protection. Relocated to Arizona. Right. Yeah. And the first thing he does is he gets his own family. His daughter, his, his, his son, his wife, yeah. involved in ecstasy smuggling pills. Right. You know, oh, this yeah. ring. And 
He's breaking the law again. Right. But not only that, you're bringing your family into it. You're right. into it. Yeah. Right. And it's, you know, if you watch anything about the Gotti movies, that was, the, that was one of John Gotti's biggest fears. I mean, actually, I think my phone, my contacts, I got John Gotti's lawyer, Bruce Cutler. Oh, is that right? <laughs> really? <laughs> Damn. It's a small world. That's why. So well, uh, do you think organized crime, I, you know, you know, you hear about it in like with the cartels and stuff, but in a city like Boston, does it run at all? Is it completely dissolved Irish or Italian or is see, that's a good response. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that is a conditioned <laughs> response. Right there. Right. I had a union official at my house at 530 this morning. Is that right? Yeah. Good there Irish you go. Guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. We still got a little pull. <laughs> that answers that. You know. Yeah. Um, I, you know. We put windows in for the district attorney. Yeah. Have coffee with the judge to sentence me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conversations just, are had. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's um. Yeah. You know, it's uh, being in the building. Yeah. I right. Just, I just I like it better when guys come by my house. Yeah. I don't want to sit at the building departments. I don't want to deal with union crap. I mean the. It's a big project going on out there now, but right. everything's on the up and up. Yep. Yeah. I mean? yeah. Like, how, do, how do you feel now? Four years out? Almost four. Is it how long have it been on? Three years. Three, right? three years three out. Years years three years out. Huh. Yep. Three years. Was adjusting after spending all that time, was adjusting to normal life? Yeah, readjusting um, to the normal stuff. I think that, I think um, my wife can probably speak to this better. I think the first year and a half, two years, I isolated. Like mm. I could sit in a room. It was like sensory overload if right. you go out. I could sit on the other side of the house by myself yep. all day with just the dog, not talk to anybody. Wow, yeah. Yeah, all no day. TV on, no, yeah. No TV, just sit. Right, right. Wow. And then finally she was like, all right, enough of this shit. Right. Got him out. <laughs> and even <laughs> of the with, comfort zone. with everything you did with the jail time, with the, with the gang and the Winter Hill, like, do you ever have PTSD nowadays? Like, do you ever have, like, bad dreams or shit, like... Like, because I would imagine off of the stuff that's happened, that would have to be a thing. I do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have night terrors. Night terrors, yeah. 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 Um, Reliving some of those moments. We right. um, generally, I mean, generally, we're, I go to bed at 7 or 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But lately, we've been <laughs> watching movies. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, I went to bed at, what, like 10 last night? A little after 10? Yeah. Like that, I was up at 1 in the morning. Really? Yeah. And then this, when you fall asleep, it's right back into... I just don't fall asleep. I'm, I just oh, stay up. okay. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's times I wake up really screaming. Yeah. Just really, and I, I you know, I obviously startled awake. So, yeah. like, you know, I just told Charlene, <sighs> kind of go downstairs, I'm up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I can't go back to bed. Yeah, for the day. Yeah. 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 Well, Unbelievable. Well, we can't thank you enough for stopping by yeah, here. Man, thank We're, you. I want you to plug um, all your social media handles. Where can oh, they find you? Is it Sean? <laughs> what's your, like, IG? <laughs> Um, Instagram is Dirty Water Diaries. Okay, yep, I like that. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, TikTok, TikTok the same. is Sean Scott Hicks. Then we have Diamond Cut Drums, Diamond Cut Records, Mob Rock Records, uh, Facebook, um, just Sean Scott. Okay, yep, um, perfect. What else is there, hon? We do custom drums. Uh, Roland yep. does, my partner, Rotten Roland. Yep. Um, so uh, we got Diamond Cut Drums. We're trying to cut a work out a deal with the uh, Keller shells up there. Oh, okay. Hampshire. Yep. Um, we have a Wachusett recording um, company out in Princeton, Mass. Yep. Um, Sony the Orchard, Rob Schwartz, Who Mag Distribution. Yep. Um, I don't know. God, you don't stop. Right. He's, yeah, <laughs> endless. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're just everywhere. Yeah. Right? And then we got, we got Terry Babbitt, Brandon Gaddy. What else do we have? I don't know. It's funny. I got, like, friends. Like, I have one of my dear friends. He's funny. He's funny. I don't even know. He's just a fan, but I just, yeah. I get in these moods one time and I just like FaceTime people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. did you really call me? Yep. And I'm like, yeah. So we have, I have this great relationship with a guy that lives in um, Czech Republic in Prague. Oh, damn. <laughs> yep. We talk at least every day, man. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, he's, he's fucking, you know, but yeah, it's funny is because he's a merchant marine. Okay. So he'll call and, and he talks to my wife and he's like, yo, check it out, brother. And he, he literally <laughs> bought a Dodge Challenger. And waited almost a year and had it shipped over. So he spends two weeks a year on his super tanker. Yep. Or two weeks every month. Goes out on the ship for two weeks. And he'll call me up and say, I'm in Germany today. Or, I'm in oh Holland. Oh, my God. And, that's and crazy. Like, but um, he's like up in the bridge of the ship. Yeah. He's got, he's got you know, our music and our new albums all like really heavy metal stuff. Right. And he's got it blaring through. The, and I'm like, I, I'm like, Charlene, look at this. 
I'm watching this ship, this freaking super tanker. Yeah, it's in some rough seas. He's, he's jamming out. He's like, Dan, let me drive this motherfucker today, <laughs> brother. And I'm like, oh, shit. And he's like, I'm jamming out. But yeah, he, he, just a lot of people like that. Power music. Oh, yeah. It's power music, dude. Oh, like, yeah. 100%. Yeah. We saw a couple clips on uh, your Instagram. And like, yep. whew, I can only imagine, imagine driving a boat in those waters, listen to the your kind of music. That would be all time. Yeah, it was crazy, dude. He's, it uh, probably caused the storm. Right. It's probably calm seas. He hits play. All of a yeah, sudden, the ocean's like. He's ocean's like, like fucking <laughs> thousand foot fucking super tanker. Yeah, dude. right. And he's up there. He's like, yo, brother. He's been in there 13 years now, and they're, they're training him. Um, but he's like, they gave me the wheel. And he's up on the bridge, and he's screaming, you know, I think um, his favorite song, I think, is uh, Insanity. Okay. And yep. He's just screaming. Like, he's got the wheel, this giant wheel, and he's like, it's Shana Day. And I'm like, oh my God, dude. I'm like, I love you, dude. That's and awesome. He just hits me up just this morning. Yeah. Goes, Had my tooth taken out yesterday. He said, um, it's good. I'm icing it. My parents say hello. Oh, I'm that's like, awesome. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. The relationships. It's like, yeah. It's uh, just being real with people. Yeah. 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 It's just being real with people. Yeah. Man. Being very approachable. Right. And, you know, it's being very straightforward, man. Right. Um, that's all, man. Yeah. I, my, my parting thing is don't do crime. It doesn't pay anymore. Right. And anybody that's making money, they're in India, they're in Russia, or they're in China, and they're committing crime from behind a computer screen. Right, right, right. There's right. no more traditional There's crime. No more, yeah. Because someone's going to rat you out. Right. Right. right, and nowadays there's That's a, a camera everywhere. Yeah, CCTV's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. 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 Yeah, everywhere. ring doorbells is a motherfucker. Is, yeah, yeah. Right. Law enforcement. I was gonna say that is caught. That's that the is, newest thing is um, they're going and they they're soliciting neighborhoods to find out who is if there's a crime in a neighborhood. Oh, who's got a camera? Who's got this? They TV. don't worry about stoplight cameras anymore. They want right. to find out who's got a ring doorbell. Right. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Wow. Dude, those have got some cases just yeah. from those yeah. right. doorbells. Makes sense. Man. Yeah, absolutely, man. So just stay in school. That's a great, yeah. Stay in school, get an education. Yeah. Learn a trade, do something, man. Just, yeah. You know, it's just this traditional crime. It's done. It's done. It's done. Yep. It's done. Wow. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> Sean Scott Hicks, former member of the Winter Hill Gang. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, man. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs>